Okay. Here we are. It's uh, We've got a Windows 10 PC here, uh, wiped completely clean with a fresh install of Windows 10 on it. Nothing but drivers installed. And the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to install Lord of the Rings Online, or LOTRO. Some people pronounce it LOTRO. Uh, I say LOTRO. Uh, how to install that with as little hubbub and as few shenanigans as possible. Um, there's a couple of quirks in the way the installer has been working for a while now. Um, the first one of which is that it, well, it requires the .NET 3.5 framework, and uh, it will actually call to to install that. Uh, it'll kind of interrupt its own install and and reach out for the .NET 3.5 files. Um, so that works, but I just find it cleaner to have it pre-installed. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to come down here to the Start button. We're going to click it, and we're just going to type Features. Uh, you can see down there, I got only to Feature without the E. And one of these you should see along here should be Turn Windows Features On or Off. So we're going to go ahead and click that. All right, and you see there along the top, there's a uh, .NET Framework 3.5. You just want to make sure you want to check that, or make sure it's checked. You may already have it installed if this isn't a new computer or a freshly installed Windows. So I go ahead and check that. I'll expand it out and sh just show real quick. You notice these two squares are not uh, do not need to be checked. Just this the main one here. We'll click OK. Windows needs uh, files from Windows Update to finish installing some features. And this is basically what would pop up in the middle of the lot row uh, client install. So we say go ahead and download. And it's going to cruise along and download those files. I should mention this will actually, even if you have a fully patched uh, Windows 10, doing this will require will then uh, cause Windows to re-download the latest cumulative uh, uh, w Windows 10 patch. So. Uh, we're going to put that off, though, until the end, because uh, several of the things we are going to install are, are going to require a uh, a cumulative Windows 10 patch. Okay, and perhaps some other patches. So uh, we now have .NET, so now in the middle of the install, it won't prompt us for that. The second one is a little more problematic for the Windows installer. Um, the Windows installer... Uh, I'm sorry, the LotRo installer used to install uh, the DirectX runtimes for us and it no longer pulls that off. It thinks it's doing it, it reports that it's doing it, but it doesn't actually successfully do it. So uh, I'll explain that while we're downloading some stuff here. So I have my, uh, I wouldn't normally use Microsoft Edge, but it's a fresh install of Windows. Uh, so that's all we have. Although Internet Explorer is, we could go get that as well on the start menu. Anyways, I have it opening to a blank page. Uh, let's see, we just want to go to, I like to go to Google before I do the search rather than using Bing. And we're going to type uh, direct x, one word, web installer, and press enter. Uh, now, as you can see here, these two are essentially identical. You do not want, you want to be careful where you're going. Uh, you don't want to end up like at this one where uh, HTTPS directx.en.softonic.com. That is some third party CNET. There's another one here. These top two, notice they go to https cord colon forward slash forward slash www.microsoft.com. And then there's the slash. Uh, it's a little beyond the scope of this to explain how the domain structure works and why Microsoft here is the important part and why Microsoft further down in here doesn't mean you're at Microsoft. But anyways, uh, the key here is let's just click this top one. Other search engines, the top one may not be the one you want, but uh, let's click here. As you can see, we're at Microsoft. The first word here is Microsoft.com. Just make sure that's the case. This is a little ad here. We're going to run down here. We're going to say Select Language English and click Download. You want to avoid uh, any of these little checkboxes where they try to foist their adware and things on you. So let's uh, click that and say No Thanks and Continue. And now we're ready down here. What do you want to do with the dxwebsetup.exe? That's the file we want. And we're just going to say save. And that will put it in our, our downloads folder. So we're going to click open folder. And if you don't click open folder, you can, of course, just find it over here. And under downloads. 
and there it is. So um, I right click and say run as administrator. You could just double click it, but when I see that little shield there, that tends to make me want to run it as administrator. So here we go. We say yes, and we say I accept, and next. We uncheck this box again because they're trying to foist the Bing bar on us. We don't want that. We click Next. Okay, so while this installs, um, this is necessary because because the, the LotRow installer fails to install the DirectX runtimes, uh, people with a fresh install of Windows uh, or on a new computer without these DX runtimes installed, oh, we need to click Next again. That was just a prompt. It says, we got to download 91.6. Is that okay? We say yes. And off it should go. There we go. Um, you won't actually be able to get uh, DX10, DirectX10, or DirectX11 uh, tech on the game. When you launch it, you'll only have DirectX9 as a possibility. Um, DX10 actually provides some eye candy that I can't imagine playing Lot Row without. Uh, the dappled shadows under trees and things like that uh, are pretty nice. So. Uh, some people will say, hey, try DX9 if you're crashing around Minas Tirith and some other areas of the game. Thankfully, the, the game is pretty stable, but uh, there are some areas, especially later in the game, where the engine struggles a little bit and can crash. Some people say, for those areas, turn it back down to DX9, all of which can be done in the game's options. Anyways, let's uh, click Finish here. So those are the two things to kind of get out of the way before we actually begin the lot row install itself. Uh, so let's begin the lot row install itself. You find lot row at uh, lotrow.com. So let's go there. www.lotrow.com. And here we are. Uh, this is a page really intended for people who have... Uh, who don't have an account, it wants you to sign up. You don't actually need to sign up uh, if you already have an account and characters and things like that, and we'll get into that a little more while we download. Uh, but we're going to go up here to the upper right corner and say go to lotrow.com. And then we're going to say the game. And we're going to say download. Now you might be asking, why are we not using Steam? Um, some of it's personal preference, and then others would argue that it's actually better for Standing Stone games uh, or SSG. Uh, that it's better for them to, to install it directly from them because then Steam isn't taking a cut of purchases made through the Steam store and things like that. I don't know how true that is. I just like to cut out the middleman where I can, and if I can download and install and run something without going through a middleman, I like it. Uh, that's what I prefer. Uh, I should say save here. So, um, But I wasn't going along here. So we're going to click the PC download button. The standard resolution button actually takes you to the exact same file. Uh, so just click the PC download button uh, and click uh, save, which is where it should come down. It should be downloading. It's going to take a little bit of time. So um, so as I was saying, I just like to cut out the middleman. I do use Steam for games that require it. It's fine, perfectly fine service, uh, but LotRow doesn't need it, so I don't use it. Um, we got 28 seconds. Uh, I mentioned something about, uh, you know, if you have an account, you don't need to create a new one every time you install the game. There's some confusion about that on the forum sometimes. Or people ask, hey, if I'm moving my computer, I'm moving to a new computer, or I bought a new computer, how do I move my characters? Uh, your characters are stored on the servers. They're not, they're not stored locally on your computer. Really, the only thing stored locally on your computer is your screenshots and your configuration and, of course, the game client the, that allows you to make connections to the servers and holds the textures and things like that but everything considered precious to you your characters and everything that belongs to them and their history and everything like that that's all stored on the ssg servers the game servers uh let's go ahead and just finish downloading so we'll say open folder and we're going to close this web browser behind us and let's see here uh lot row live we are going to double click it and we're going to say yes to this prompt and then we're going to say English. And you know what? While that's loading, you see this little file manager window. I'm just going to close that, make it a little cleaner. All right. We're going to click Next. I always say Custom. We're going to say I accept. Notice right here it's saying Microsoft DirectX 9.0 C will be installed. That's what it thinks it's doing, but 
that's why we installed it ourselves. Uh, by the way, if you already had that installed, you m if you're not on a fresh, pristine computer, some other game may have already installed it for you, so that might have been an unnecessary step. However, it doesn't do any harm to install it, so might as well, you know, uh, install it. Uh, let's see here. Let's click Next. It's going to install the C program files, x86, Standing Stone Games, the Lord of the Rings Online. Click Next. Create a desktop icon. Yes, please. So what it's actually installing here is a stub uh, that's then going to go out and download the 25 gigabytes or so of the rest of the client. Now, as you can see here, it says it's trying, it's installing DirectX and then the Visual C++ redistributables. redistributables. Uh, those are actually getting installed, except DirectX, as we mentioned. Um, so those two will perhaps need a patch when we next go and, p and update Windows. So, uh, well, we'll get back to that topic of where's your stuff stored um, because I don't want some dead time here while we're just waiting for me to click the next button. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and leave that checked there, launch the, the Lord of the Rings online. We're going to click Finish. Would you like to install the high-resolution data files for this game? This optional download requires 6 gigabytes of available hard drive space. I always say yes to this because 6 gigabytes is not that much in the grand scheme of things anymore. And uh, you don't have to use those high high resolution textures, although most modern computers can handle it just fine. Uh, sorry, I scrolled down there. I read it in its entirety, of course. I'm sure you did as well. And I clicked I agree. Now that begins something called a Akamai. Uh, you can see a Akamai Net Session Client has installed. It wants access. It is safe. There's no problem with it. But as you can see here, downloading game files using a Akamai Net Session. That's how I pronounce it, at least. Akamai. Um, this is um, this is a, a a network client that you know. I'm assuming it has kind of more air control and things like that in the download. Um, it probably optimizes the download or sends it to servers that that SSG would prefer that we get the files from. So, Akamai downloads this bulk uh, pile of files and drops it onto our computer. At that point, after it, it has a session or two here, so you can see it's downloading 25 gigabytes, 25 and a half gigabytes uh, of uh, 25,000 megabytes is 25 gigabytes. Um, it's, it's downloading that much. When a Akamai finishes and it restarts and then the client comes back up, uh, that gets the game to a, a kind of a certain state of release uh, the kind of the last state that that SSG decided. Well, let's 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 make this the game client that's available, and then it needs to patch to the absolute latest version of the game. That patching is not handled by Akamai. Akamai only handles the initial download of that point release of the client, and then after that, the normal patching session takes place to bring it up to date to the current release. The current release is now update 21 as of the recording of this video, which is Mordor. And uh, so this will take, as you can see, a little bit of time. Uh, we're at 7%. I've got a pretty decent cable internet connection. Uh, let's take a look here. Task Manager. You don't need to do this, uh, but let's go to Performance, Ethernet. Now, as you can see, it's pretty much pegged I'm actually really only supposed to get about 150 megabits per second, but they turbo boost you to up to 200. And as you can see there, I was at 200, and it's uh, it's pretty imp it's pretty impressive that Akamai is saturating my my downward uh, my down my download bandwidth. Um, whoop, and then as it switches files, you'll see it kind of uh, stall out for a second. Anyways. Um, one point of confusion is that Akamai, you could, when you're all done and you've patched to the newest release and you're playing the game successfully, you can go into Add Remove Programs and remove Akamai because it's not used for the standard patching that happens when, when SSG adds content to the game or, or patches or fixes the game. So we'll actually do that at the end of this procedure. We'll, we'll remove Akamai, but... Um, for the initial install, it uses a Kamai. Um, I'm told I've never actually see this, seen this happen, but um, 
I'm told that if for some reason your client should become corrupt and a file goes missing, a Kamai, the client, the game, the lot row client will launch and say, uh, hey, I'm missing a file. And it will actually trigger a Kamai to reinstall itself if you have re uninstalled it. Um, so it'll trigger it to reinstall itself, go in and get the missing file or files from a Kamai, and then your uh, and then your client will be uh, back in shape. It, then it might need a patch again. Who knows? I've I've never actually seen that happen. Thankfully, my my client does not tend to corrupt itself very often. Um, while we're waiting, I just wanted to to finish that. Uh, and then we'll pause the video and we won't watch the whole download here. But um, while we're waiting, the uh, well, I guess what I was saying before about everything that's important is stored on your um, on the servers, uh, not on your computer. Um, I guess the best way to explain that is, you know, if you have a friend or a neighbor who plays Lot Row and you're at his house and his or her house and you wanted to play for a little bit. Now, I'm, I wouldn't advise this because I don't know how clean and safe that computer is, but you could just put your username and password into that friend's computer and there your characters would be and everything they own. Uh, the only thing that would be different would be the configuration of the game. Things like, you know, obviously resolution if they have a different uh, monitor or different resolution that they prefer, key mappings, things like that. But your characters and everything that belongs to them stored on the server. All you need is your username and password of your pre-existing account. And and that's all you need. Okay, so we're going to take a break here while this downloads. We're at 22%. I will try to keep an eye on it. And uh, we'll come back when this is done. Oh, before I go, one thing you might want to do. Um, I, I've seen the client download when it's going to take a long time get a little freaky due to the computer sleeping. So real quick, let's click here. And again, you don't click anything else. You just start typing. I'm going to type sleep. And you can see, best match, power and sleep settings. Let's click there. Make sure we're not accidentally clicking anything behind it. So screen, when plugged in, turn off after. Now, you're going to want to put these back the way they were, but I'm going to say never. Uh, when we're done installing, you'll want to put these back the way they were. But for now, let's put them to never and sleep. Never. And close that. And there we go. So um, I'm going to step away while this downloads, and we'll come back. Okay, so as we can see here, we've got about uh, we're at about 98% here at that bottom bar, which is the uh, the total download. And we're about to wrap up this first session from Akamai. Hopefully, it'll only take one. I'm going to close this. We held steady at a right around 200 there for most of it. It will bounce. Well, here we go. Uh, let's see what happens. Hopefully we'll start the non-Akamai patching at this point. Downloading, downloading the loading screens for each language. Doesn't always take this long to do the loading screens. You see it at each client launch, but it's actually just checking them. So they go faster in the future. Unless there's a new one. So, let's see. Looks like we are done with Akamai, so it is going, but we're not going to uninstall until everything's working. So it's downloading uh, 36 quick files here, and then it'll probably restart the launcher. And then there will be a long patch. Uh, hopefully not too long, though. It's going to depend on really the, the change or delta between the point release that Akamai downloads and the most updated client, and how much how many changes SSG puts uh, into the game before they release yet another point release that Akamai downloads. Uh, so hopefully that made sense. But right now it's not too bad. If, if memory serves, it was uh, it was about... Th Akamai took about 20, 20 to 30 minutes there, and I think the patching's going to take less than 10. But obviously I'll edit the video up and so we're not just sitting here waiting. We're at file 33 of 36, and they're pretty big files now, so they're taking their time. The good news is that Akamai is finished. Now we're going directly to the SSG patch servers. And there, this is going to be a smaller set of patches, kind of just prepare the uh, client, I think, and the launcher. And then there's going to be, it's going to restart itself. Uh, and then download a larger batch. 
at which point we will pause this video. Just want to show the end of this in case there is any restarting of it or anything to click, which there normally isn't. But sometimes you will get a Windows UAC or User Access Control window uh, prompt where you got to click yes. Sometimes if you miss one of those prompts, uh, my experience, I think, is that it eventually times out and then you'll just come back to a blank desktop where it looks like the 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 launcher or patcher has just crashed but actually it was it was essentially restarting itself and couldn't get permission from you to do so which then just timed out and left you back at the blank desktop you just restart the the up here at the icon there uh and that will get you back get you back patching but the idea is to let this to make this go as smoothly as possible might seem like a mundane video to even make, but it's shocking how... Well, I shouldn't say shocking. I mean, I'm an IT guy. I've been into computer games my whole life and computer gaming rigs and building them and things like that and installing Windows from scratch and before that installing DOS from scratch. So, you know, I, I shouldn't say it's shocking that not everyone's a geek like me and not everyone is... is and especially, it seems like, in the Lord of the Rings, in the LotRo community, there's a lot of people who are casual, very casual um, computer users and very casual computer gamers who nevertheless love Middle-earth and Tolkien. And so I think LotRo might have more than its fair share of people who are a little afraid of their computers and are a little, uh, and just want it to work and not necessarily, uh, they don't necessarily want to know how it's working behind the scenes. And even just the slightest hiccup can sometimes throw them off. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they have. They, I'm sure they have skills and knowledge I don't have. Uh, so, this video is basically just for people who want to get through the install with the least amount of hubbub, as I said, and uh, and have it yet fully functional. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the client is restarting. It did not need a UAC. It checked in with a comma. You might have saw there very quickly, and then said nope don't need anything from a comma, I will go to the SSG patch servers. And now you can see it's downloading 12 of 189 files, and it's actually going pretty quick. But we will uh, take a break here and come back when it looks like it's almost done. Alright, that actually moved along pretty fast. We're at 175, 176, 178, 9, 80 of 89. 97% done. You basically go by this bottom green bar here for the overall progress. And there we are. We're ready to log in. Okay. So, um sometimes we're going to we're going to log in, show you that the game's working, uh hopefully get the prompt for DX10. Uh I originally recorded this on a virtual machine which doesn't support DX10 and even though we've done everything right, no prompt. Uh okay, so we're going to do all that. We're going to log in, we're going to show you that the game is working. Then we'll log out and I'll just show you where to go to uninstall a comi which you no longer need. And uh, you'll want to turn on a little s uh, a little checkbox in Windows Update to get the updates to the uh, uh, Visual C++. Anyways, uh, runtimes that it installed. Just a few house house cleaning things at the end. But for now, let's uh, whoops. Let's see if we can log in. That's my little experimental free account I use. And uh, let's see if I remember. Yay. All right, so I'm a Landreval guy. And, of course, we read this in its entirety. Get all that, and we click I agree. And we read this in its entirety. And we click I agree. And first launch. We detect that this machine is capable of running dir in DirectX 11 graphics mode. Would you like to enable? Yes, we would. Now, if we had not installed DirectX web installer at the beginning of this, or... Uh, had your computer not had a prior game install it, you would not get this prompt. You would not have the option to run DX10 or DX11. So we said yes. And now this often happens. It runs in kind of a little weird uh, side window there. And then this Windows firewall alert comes up. So we're going to say allow. Now here's the tricky part. See how it constrains Our my mouse? Oh, now Gandalf's going to talk to me. So I'll tell you the what we're going to do. 
You're going to ignore the... Well, here, and here's what I do. I drag this over, and I click allow. Doom, the shadow of and then we click on it, and it goes into full screen. It. Now we got to turn on sound here. I'm going to hit escape. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm going to hit escape again. Ah, peaceful music. So it shouldn't be going over me too much here. But as you can see, we are functional. Here's my little testy guy called Autifer. And I'm just going to turn down master volume all the way. We click accept. All right, so we're in the game. Um, I'm tempted to go on about the avatar update visible and the misunderstandings that people seem to have about that. That only affects what you see on your avatars, not what others see. I, uh, you can uncheck that, and, it, and it's client-wide. People think it's per character. It's crazy. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's for while you're running your client, do you want to see the avatar updates? And it's not per character if you have several characters. And then, whether you have that checked or not, if I walk up to you and I have it checked, I'm going to see your new avatar appearance, not the old. Anyways, I'm, but I digress. Okay, here we go. Options. Uh, first thing you should probably do is come up here. If you have it all decent computer hardware, uh, I, I set it to ultra high. That's my computer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, then I always set anti-aliasing to 8x as well. Now, you may not want to do that if you're if you're not running on a super super beefy computer. Uh, this resolution, you want to set this to your native resolution of your monitor for full screen. Right now, I have it set lower for the recording of this video, and so we want 1920 by 1080. There we go. And hope this video is working. Hope it's still recording. So uh, and then for windowed, I actually set it to the same. I'll show you why. Uh, and that's actually 16 by 9, but you can leave it on auto. Uh, I'm going to leave it on auto. And when you set the overall to ultra, that goes and it sets all of this stuff. So there's not going to be a lot left to do here. You might want to sync to refresh rate, these types of things, but generally you're going to be good. And uh, we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, notice here, under settings, there's a key mapping. Uh, make a note of that, because we're going to we're going to point that out later. Um, but gra graphics, advanced graphics, audio. Uh, here's where, ooh, we do not want. The XFi uh, has some uh, bugs in its driver. It's not actually SSG's fault. So we're going to set this to generic software. In the future, I might make a video about using Rapture 3D and other uh, OpenAL uh, APIs that give you better surround sound in LotRo. But for now, that's fine. Click Accept. And uh, the reason I set the resolution to the same as the uh, full screen is because you can just click Alt and Enter at the same time. And now we've got the window that we can move aside a little bit, get some work done. I'll go show you Documents and The Lord of the Rings Online. Here you've got your lot row key map file. Remember, uh, that's where your key mappings are stored. This is where your graphics settings and everything else is stored. Um, if you ever have any trouble, a lot of times the first thing to try is to, to, to delete your user preferences.ini, and that will cause it to launch with very low resolution defaults. Might get you back into the game, and then you can configure it again, and it will rewrite a new user prefer preferences.ini. Um, that's all that's really stored on your computer uh, of import. Um, you'll write your screenshots here. Let's see if we can do that from here, real quick. See if that wrote one without being in the yeah so there we go I hit F11 to write a screenshot while I was in the client and here's our screenshot okay we'll use photos and there's our screenshot so you get the idea um, we write another screenshot and there's the other one so um, if you actually like restored your computer with a, a my documents or a documents folder that already had a Lord of the Rings online so when you installed the client, if you already had this folder here with a pre-existing user preferences and a pre-existing key map, um, it would have used those. Uh, so you would have gotten the resolution you used to have on your old computer. You would have gotten your key maps back immediately. And when you wrote your next screenshot, it would go to the last spot available and write a new one without overwriting your old ones. So that's kind of nice. Um, 
and uh, the one thing to take from this is uh, if, the, if you're moving from computer to computer, bring your lotro.keymap file with you. It'll save you a lot of trouble making new key maps. The user preferences is pretty quick to set up. As you saw, you just say set it to you know, low, medium, very high, high, ultra, whatever. Set the resolution, and you're pretty much good to go in your settings. Um, all right. I think we're wrapping it up here. So let's uh, bring... I'm going to just line it back up, and then I uh, we can go back to full screen. We can go out of full screen. Back to full screen. Let's go ahead and quit. And there we go. Uh, the other thing you keep in this uh, documents, again, let's show you where that is. You could actually drill down through the entire computer. Go to this PC, C, Users, there's me, Hrun, Documents, The Lord of the Rings Online. There it is. Um, you see your screenshots, what we just went through. Uh, the other things you might have in here are any plugins. Any third-party plugins you run with the game, you might also have music. But if you're into that, uh, the music files that you play in-game, you know, like uh, instruments, uh, you you often see those uh, being played in-game. If you're into that, you probably already know this, but that's also stored in here. Uh, but that's it. That's really all that should be stored in here. Um, just for curiosity, uh, you know, where is the game itself? It's under C program x86 because it's a 32-bit program uh, let's see and standing stone games if you have an older install it might be under turbine the prior developer and and uh, operator of the game but for new installs it's under standing stone games the lord of the rings online and here's all the actual files that make up the game client you do not want to mess around in here so don't uh, everything you need to keep backed up or, uh, oh, your, your chat logs and stuff also appear under your documents folder. So, anyways, that's all you want is the documents folder, Lord of the Rings Online, the rest you don't mess with. Okay, so let's uh, go uninstall Akamai. So we click there. We click the gear. We go to apps. And we find Akamai right there. And we say uninstall. And we say yes. And we say uninstall. All right, so now that vestigial Akamai is gone, and as you will see, LotRo will continue to function. Checking the connecting to patch server, checking product, still patched and ready to go. So we could log in there, but we're not gonna. Let's change our sleep settings back. Sleep, power and sleep settings. Let's say 10 minutes for the monitor. And I'm going to say an hour for the PC. Put those however you liked them or put them back to where they were. That's up to you. And then finally, what's left? Oh, we'll want to patch Windows because installing the .NET framework, as I mentioned before, installing the .NET framework and installing those um, visual C++ runtimes will cause your Windows to want to re-download. Well, the .NET framework will require Windows to go and get its last cumulative update. But you actually want to come down here to Advanced Options and check this box that says, Give me updates for other Microsoft products when I update Windows. You check that, and then we click this little back arrow here, and then we say Check for Updates. And what that'll do is it'll cause it to go look for those updates for the visual C++ runtimes that get installed along with LotRo. And hopefully this won't take too long, or we may have to edit heavily, but uh, we should see at least the cumulative update come across. Here we go. So uh, you might have seen that fly by there. There's the cumulative update to Windows 10, uh, the latest one, but there was also a security update for uh, the dot, uh, Visual C++ runtimes. So that's good to know that it's getting them all. Always tense to stall right here. It's probably doing something behind the scenes, or it may not be. Who really knows? Oh, here we go. Here we go. There we go. Security update for Visual C++ Service Pack 1. And the preparing to install updates. So you get the idea here. It's going to download these. Then it's going to prompt you to restart. And
and then we'll be done. When you restart, you should come up with a fresh install of LotRo ready to go. Matter of fact, it may not ask us to restart if the uh, cumulative update was just a minor little check. This is a weird behavior because I've got this HP printer on my network that for some reason makes Windows updates say, hey, I've got this up. Never mind. Hey, I've got this. Oh, never mind. Uh, and then it'll say, there it is. Your device is up to date. Last checked. So we'll check update history. And there, as you can see, it apparently reinstalled the cumulative update, or at least the parts of it that it needed to, but it didn't need to restart for the parts that it patched. Uh, security update, which makes sense because it's the .NET framework that it updated. It did update Visual C++ 2010, which it comes along with LotRo. Um, and it, uh, these are probably from earlier today. So we're all set. And with that, I think uh, we'll wrap up this, uh, <laughs> like I said, might seem a kind of a mundane tutorial, but I think it might help a few people out there. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to SSG for 10 years of adventuring in Middle Earth. I hope somebody finds this useful and enjoys their time in Middle Earth, and thank you very much.